Choosing the best flux for your welding application is critical to achieving optimum performance from the submerged arc process. Submerged arc welding fluxes from Hobart filler metals do a lot more than simply protect the weld. Some are formulated to provide general purpose performance, but others are formulated to give optimal mechanical properties, a specific chemical composition, or allow welding at high travel speeds. To select the best flux, it's important to consider all the variables in the welding operation such as joint design, mechanical property requirements, and productivity expectations. And then compare these variables with the unique characteristics of each flux. For example, which flux should you use for a single pass weld? Or which flux should you use for a large multi-pass weld? To answer these questions, it's important to understand flux neutrality to know when to choose between an active or a neutral flux. Flux neutrality is a term that's used to describe how much a flux can influence the chemical composition of the weld deposit. There's several different tests used to determine how much alloy a flux adds or removes, but two primary distinctions are made from the results, active and neutral. As the name suggests, neutral fluxes remain neutral. They do not significantly influence the chemistry of the weld deposit. This is beneficial when making tough, crack-free, multi-pass welds. On the other hand, active fluxes can provide more unique welding characteristics because they actively influence the chemistry of the weld deposit. But unlike neutral fluxes, active fluxes are not typically recommended for large multi-pass welds. Instead, they're best suited for single or two-pass fillet and groove welds. Often, these fluxes provide improved weld cleaning, helping to make quality welds over lightly rusty or scaled materials. The formulas of many active fluxes also help to maintain good bead contour at high travel speeds. To illustrate this concept, We'll perform a fillet weld over scaled base metal at 35 inches per minute travel speed using a high basicity neutral flux and our HA-495, an active flux. For comparison purposes, both welds are made using similar welding parameters. HA-495 and all active fluxes are very parameter sensitive. Be sure to contact us for recommendations on operating parameters and always maintain good control over the welding procedure. HA-495 is able to produce quality welds at a higher travel speed than the high basicity neutral flux. However, this neutral flux provides superior mechanical properties and is recommended for large multi-pass welds. Consider neutral fluxes for most general purpose welding applications and active fluxes for fast one or two pass welds. But keep in mind that travel speed and productivity aren't always the most important consideration in some welding applications. One example is offshore structure fabrication. Welds need to resist harsh waves and storms and very low seawater temperatures. Toughness, the ability of a weld to absorb rapidly applied energy, is an important design concern and flux basicity should be considered. Basicity is the ratio of chemically basic to acidic compounds inside of the flux composition. Our product data sheets describe basicity using a basicity index. A more basic flux will have a higher basicity index value. Weld metal oxygen content above 300 parts per million can be very harmful to weld toughness. Fortunately, as basicity increases, the total weld metal oxygen is lower. As a result, high basicity fluxes tend to offer improved toughness. Select fluxes with a high basicity index for demanding service conditions and critical applications. But be aware that fluxes with a high basicity index tend to weld a lot differently and often not as smoothly as low basicity fluxes. High basicity fluxes offer improved toughness, but often have a rougher bead appearance and somewhat more difficult slag release. To illustrate this concept, we'll perform a weld pass on three separate test coupons using three different fluxes, SWX110, SWX120, and SWX150. Each of these fluxes has a different basicity index, so when we clean the weld off, we should expect to see differences between the welds we made even though we're using the same wire and welding parameters for each weld. The lowest basicity flux of the three, SWX110, had excellent slag removal and bead contour. The second weld we made using SWX120, which had kind of a moderate basicity level, also had a very nice flat bead contour and excellent slag removal. SWX150, flux with the highest basicity index of the three, had the most convex contour and a slightly more difficult slag release, but both are more than acceptable, especially considering the excellent mechanical properties that this product provides. 
Always remember that each flux welds a little differently. Selecting the best flux for your application can be a balancing act between mechanical properties such as toughness and operating characteristics such as slag release. A good rule of thumb is to select the flux with the lowest basicity index that's able to provide sufficient mechanical properties. Basicity index is also a good way to compare fluxes. Fluxes with similar basicity indexes will weld very similar. Selecting the proper flux is important to achieving the best welding characteristics and integrity, but so is proper use and storage. Our SWX line of fluxes are carefully formulated and packaged so that they're very low in moisture when they leave our factory. But like all agglomerated fluxes, they're prone to absorbing moisture if stored improperly. Any moisture in the flux contributes additional diffusible hydrogen into the weld metal, which can increase the risk of hydrogen-induced cracking. This risk is even greater in welding thick, restrained, or high-strength materials. Fortunately, the risk of hydrogen-induced cracking, as well as porosity and pock marking, can be minimized by proper use and storage. Once open, Hobart fluxes should be stored in a heated hopper or drying cabinet at 255 to 345 degrees Fahrenheit. If the flux has been ex exposed to a source of moisture, such as being outside of a heated hopper for a significant amount of time, it should be reconditioned. This is done by heating the flux in a hopper at 570 to 660 degrees Fahrenheit for at least two hours. It's important to ensure that the entire volume of flux, including the flux in the center of the hopper, reaches this temperature. If not, the average moisture level may be higher than we recommend. To maintain good welding characteristics, flux should not be reconditioned more than twice. For more information on Hobart wires and fluxes, please visit us online at hobartbrothers.com slash submergedark.